Hello everyone, this is uh, lecture four, the fourth video, um, the fourth lecture, and I'm going to go over our uh, topic for this week, which also includes kind of going over the assignment as well, which will be to uh, model texture and UV to different objects in two different ways. So previously we did really simple UV unwrapping, UV maps, where we modeled something and then we UV mapped it to the UV color grid, which gave us a sense of uh, proportion and texture resolution. Um, after that, what you would do is you would take that and create a texture for it. Um, you can do that in any image editing program of your choice. Um, I typically will use uh, Substance Painter, which is a program for texturing 3D models. And you can essentially uh, draw or paint the texture onto the model itself. Um, that requires learning a new software package, which might be a little too much for what we're doing here. So we're going to just kind of do it in Photoshop. And then the second way is create the texture first and then apply the texture to the model. And these would be the two different ways that we'll do it. And the goal is to just kind of like, give you a sense of how kind of flexible you can be with this sort of work. So you don't really need to worry too much about, you know, doing this first or that first, as long as it kind of gets done and looks good. In fact, when I'm modeling s something complicated, like a whole scene or something like that, um, sometimes I will uh, just sort of do things in, a random order going back and forth depending on sort of like what I'm interested in. So um, there's really no reason to worry too much about it. You just have to kind of get it done. So I'm just kind of modeling a random shape. Uh, there's a there's a cup on my desk, like a mug, and it kind of has this shape to it, like a coffee mug. I guess it has this kind of like rounded taper to the end that supposedly traps heat in and keeps your coffee warmer longer. I'm not really sure if that works or not, but that's kind of what we're working with. So um, I'm going to texture this in a way where there's a difference on the outside and inside, which will, um, you know, kind of make it, I guess, uh, require us to unwrap it and texture it kind of in this way, if that makes sense, kind of the way we did last week. Um, so uh, let me just, Go ahead and finish this out. So a couple of things. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start smoothing it so that it starts looking good. So I put a shade smooth on there. Um, I actually want this to be smooth on the bottom. So I'm going to increase the angle a little bit. Maybe it's a 45. And that's pretty good. The bottom itself does have a hard edge. So I'm just going to do a sharp on the bottom edge. So I get that little kind of like flat part. And then the rest looks good. So when I'm modeling, remember polygons are only one sided. So if I were to turn on back face calling, you can see there's only one sided. So I do have to model the inside. Um, you can do that just by selecting like, well, I could select this and I could do something like this and that works. Um, but I want it to be more exact because the inside is exactly the same shape of the outside. And the easiest way is to just use a modifier. So I'll usually make something like this and then use the modifier for the inside. So go to a modifier and I think there's one called solidify. And thickness, I'm gonna bring the thickness inside. Um, that looks about right. So now I have the same thickness on the inside and outside. And then I will apply that and that allowed me to edit it. So the only thing I don't like, um, excuse me for a second. Okay. Sorry. I had to, uh, had to cough really quick. I didn't want to cough on the mic, but so one thing I don't like about this is the, so in the actual cup, this is flat, this rim is flat and obviously it's not here. So I'm going to go ahead and fix that. So a really easy way to do it. And I don't know if we've done this before, but you can use snapping. So if you come up to the top and you see this little magnet, this will allow you to snap, meaning I can snap vertices to certain other references in the scene. 
So I'm gonna click on the settings, switch it to vertex, and then turn on snapping. So that means if I were to move a vertice, it'll snap to other vertices, which can be handy sometimes. Um, what's also handy is you can use it to snap on individual axes. So I could move on the Z axis. And then if I hover over this other vertex here, it'll snap the height to the same as that one. And then I get this nice flat edge on top, which is kind of what I'm looking for um, for this little cup thing. I don't know what this is. Um, all right, so now to UV map this, you go to UV map mode. Um, you can make a UV unwrapping texture if you want to. I don't do it that often because I kind of know what it might look like, but I'll do it just in case if you want to do it. So color grid, making an image, uh, okay. Come over to your model, go to base color, image texture, and then we already created it, it's in the blender scene, so we don't need to make a new one or open anything. We just have to click right here. Sorry, my chair is squeaky. Um, and then click UVs, and there we go. Um, so pull this down, turn on texture, and then there's, actually it doesn't look too bad, honestly. The inside is backwards, but we can fix that. So uh, we go to vertex mode. Um, first of all, I'm gonna grab the bottom and since the bottom has this hard edge, I might keep, well, there's like a, so uh, let me just kind of show a couple of things here that might be, um, hold on a second. Ah. Okay, hold on. Let's see if it'll let me grab. Yeah, there we go. It's doing it. Okay. So I have this whole sort of side selected and I'm just gonna go to U to unwrap it. And then remember you get this kind of weird sort of thing, which means you need to give it a seam. And I'm just gonna find a seam here and then just alt click. I'll just let it go all the way around cause I'm gonna have to do the same for the inside and then mark the seam. And then if I select this again, so here's the thing too, like if I hold L and select the whole model, um, you get all the UVs. And since I separated those previously, I can just grab these here. And in this window, I can also tap U and unwrap. And then you get this. Now you do get this kind of weird sort of deal where it kind of spreads out here. That's because of the curve. So at the top and bottom, I have these curves and it does kind of, um, you know, make this a little curt. You can keep it that way if you want to. Um, it's up to you. Uh, there are ways to fix this that are sort of annoying. Um, you can go through and sort of straighten it out. Um, there's some add-ons, some UV mapping add-ons you can put on Blender that'll give you tools for straightening out. I don't know like how much I can throw at you. Um, if this is like kind of like your, one of your first times doing it, um, it's kind of a lot. So um, yeah, it's up to you. If you want to keep it like this, you can, uh, for something this low poly, you could almost just sort of manually straighten it out. So I could do, um, S X zero and then G X and kind of pull it and just kind of go row by row and scale out on the zero and then go this way and scale it on the Y. Um, there are some other tools you can use, um, to do this, some kind of more advanced stuff with straightening out one of the quads. Um, let me actually see if I can, uh, so let me select like that. Let's see if this works. Um, okay, hold on, that really didn't work. Let me, so this doesn't always work, but I can, let me just mess around for a second. I'm not gonna like mess with this too much, but so I'm scaling on the X and the Y, it's X zero, X zero. Oh, I got this extra one. Okay. So then select this one and then the rest. So this one is active, the straight one, and then do follow active quads. Well, that kind of worked. So I kind of straightened it out. Um, 
Actually, that did work pretty well. That's interesting. Um, did it get the, oh, it got the inside too. Um, okay. Well, let's just follow, let's just do this then. So it also got the inside. It looks like, let me just grab, well, let me select this and see with the inside. So here's a trick. I'm going to select the bottom and then control plus, 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 plus to go up the side. Yeah. So now here's this and I'll just grab this and kind of move it over. So now it kind of separates it. So now I have the outside and inside kind of done already. And I don't need to do these, this rim on top. I don't usually like to do when UV mapping this way. So if it's like a, like a kind of a sharp 90 degree angle, well, this isn't 90 degrees, but it's kind of like, this is somewhat vertical and this is somewhat horizontal. Um, I'll just keep them separate that way. So I'll grab, it's not letting me grab the ring. There we go. So if you hold alt and you click and you sort of click like here and then sort of in the direction it'll go around. Um, oh, so it did it straighten that out too. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So that follow quad thing is pretty, pretty cool. Um, it worked much better. I thought it would like have trouble going around, but I guess it didn't. Um, so the bottom looks good and this looks good. This looks good. I think this is pretty much done. So let's get it all in there. So I'm going to tap L. So here's all my pieces. Um, you could keep them all together like I had before if you want. Um, I'm going to keep them separate because I want them to be different. Why is, where's the bottom? Oh, the bottom's there. Well, Oh, there they all are. Okay. So pull these out. So all of the letters and numbers look about the same size. I think I'm going to make these a little smaller so they match a little better. Um, I think that looks pretty good. And then let's grab these and fit these into here. So this is more the traditional route. So I'm going to make my own texture here. Um, I do like to make it make sense if that <laughs> I don't want to say if that makes sense again. So let's grab the top edge. So I switched this to this view here. So this is UV sync selection, which means it keeps the UVs visible in this view. And I can kind of see like where stuff is. Um, so I'm just keep, kind of keeping a mental note. I think it makes more sense to orient these um, horizontally. So that's the bottom. So let's flip it. So now this is the top. Uh, just texture wise, it makes more sense that way. So I'm going to do it that way. So I'm going to rotate them horizontally. That way, when you make your texture, you don't have to sort of visualize yourself flipping it while you're making it. And then let's do the same thing for this. So which, which side is the top? Um, this one is the top. So this needs to, oop. yeah. So that's the bad thing about this view is it will break it apart. And if you're in vertex mode, it'll select vertices that are attached to each other, which can be annoying. Um, but if I'm just in face mode and I grab all of this, it should be okay. So I'm going to rotate this. Um, wait, which way this way? Is this the top? Yeah. Okay. This way, this way, sorry, I'm confusing myself. Um, and then just tap and type 90 in there just to make sure it's nice and exact and then move it into place. And I might leave a little bit of space. And then I can slide this. So this is that top rim. You can slide it in between the two, um, or you could put it on top. I might put it on top because it kind of makes sense to do it that way. And just kind of pull this down a little bit using the move tool. I'm going to keep it kind of separate. So I know like the inside and outside are different colors and patterns. And I can kind of sit there. So I'm trying to get it to fit as close as I can. Um, 
and then these There does need to be a little bit of space so they can't be like exact on top of each other. So when you're making an image texture, there is a little bit of anti-aliasing, which will blend, kind of blend them a little bit, but that's probably good. And then I can throw these in and I'm actually going to scale these down a little bit because I don't really care too much about how big they are. They should be close. They're pretty close. They're actually, they're pretty much, they're, pretty big but you know are you really going to see the inside of the cup i don't know it's close enough i think and you won't be able to really see the inside or the bottom too much so i think having the outsides is more important so now this is unwrapped so from here this image you can bring into photoshop or any image editor of your choice and you can texture it and bring the image back into blender um, if you kind of know where things are, you can sort of do it that way. Um, like I said, my favorite way is Substance Painter, which is, you know, something we haven't gone over yet. But if you have an Adobe subscription, then you can use Substance Painter. It um, was purchased by Adobe, so now they sort of control it. Um, but if you want to keep it, you know, just kind of one thing at a time then you could just bring us into photoshop or any other image editor that you use there's some free ones online i know some of you like clip studio and krita and some other sort of free options and those are all fine um, i've even had people use procreate they've taken sort of like an image into procreate and then like painted the texture on top of it um, something you can do for assistance if you go to uv um, actually, let me go to, let me go select these. You can go to UV and where is it? Export UV layout. And I could just kind of like make a, um, uh, PNG is fine. This is fine. And I'll call this mug UVs and it's going to give me a PNG and just export the layout. So what that gives me. Um, if I open it, so let me open it really, really quick. So here's Photoshop. I'm going to slide it over. So here are my UVs in Photoshop that you can see. And you can bring the wireframe over. So if I were to paint a color, you can see the wireframe on top. And you can use this as sort of like a guide for making your textures. So from here, you can bring textures in as images or um, you can paint on top of it. Um, so I'm just gonna paint just because um, I don't want this video to be too long. So let's do the outside, sort of a, let's do a gradient. So let's do like a blue, like a, um, Let's do kind of like a black and white gradient for the outside. This is going to be kind of an ugly, just a warning. This is going to be kind of an ugly mug here, but um, I'm just sort of going for a visual aid, not necessarily good, good design. So uh, let's get this way. So yeah, this kind of like black and white gray gradient. And then um, let's do a red. and blue gradient on the inside. This is gonna be pretty awful. And so one thing I don't remember is I don't remember which one of these is the bottom or top. So I'm gonna to have to do that real quick. So um, let's switch up my gradient to what I'm already using. Oops. Okay, so let's try it again. I wanna do red on top. So red and blue gradient, good. And then uh, let's go back, back to Blender and see. So the one on the left is the inside. And the inside is the color. So let's do blue. And again, please put a little more effort into this and make it look really nice if you could. Um, hold on, there we go. I just made a new layer so that you can kind of see how it fits. 
and this one is the outside which i'm just going to make it black so it kind of fits so here's my mug texture turn off the wireframe this is what you get all right um and then if you want to i'm just going to do mug and I guess it would help if it was on top. Mug. There we go. This is literally the worst texture I've ever seen, but that's okay. That's just for teaching purposes. Um, this is the inside. I want this to be on the outside. And then I want it to be white. White. There we go. Okay, let's save this. So now this is a texture, save a copy. Please make yours look good. Um, this is ugly mug. Put a, all right, so that's done. So let's go to Blender and let's put our new texture on our object. So we're gonna go here. I'm gonna make a new texture and then call this um, mug material. And I don't need the UV anymore because I'm done unwrapping it. So for mug material, go to base color, image texture, open, um, C drive, this and ugly mug, boom. And then make sure you turn on texture in your view. So there we go, mug, and it's got the gradient and then the inside, all right? So that's, that's that way to do it. Um, and of course you can, use Im photo source and images, or you can use, or you can hand paint it or whatever you want to do here. It doesn't really matter. Just model UV map, make a texture better than this, at least minimum. Um, all right. So I'm just going to move this out of the way. So now the second way I'm going to hide this is to create the texture first. So I'm going to open a couple of images really quick. Um, just to show you sort of what I mean. So I have these images that I made before I started recording and I have this kind of texture. So, um, sometimes you can make multiple materials for objects. For example, if I were to do a, a well, I could do a brick and then some wood for like the beams and the little roof thing, and then maybe another one for shingles and that's fine. Um, Right now we're not working with multiple materials, we're working with one material per object. So we're gonna kind of do this, which we're combining it. So I made this brick texture in Photoshop just with a couple of painting on top of some photos and using some masks and things. And then I have this wood texture that I created in the same way. Um, there are some free websites that you can grab texture images from, and I'll show you those really quick. Um, so here's a couple of them. Texture Ninja has some, so they have these different categories that you can grab textures from. Um, you may have to make an account to download them. I don't use these websites, I just kind of found them. Um, I use something called textures.com, but textures.com uh, isn't free anymore. I sort of got grandfathered in because I've had an account for years. Um, so here's some alternatives. Uh, here's another one called cloud.blender.org. And this has some images you can grab, different categories. This is bricks only. Um, they have bark and buildings. So there's all some stuff there. And then Texturefy, uh, Polyhaven, right? So there's some options here. The only thing on Polyhaven, so these are full materials. So that means you get a full material. So um, you get like the color, the brick color, and then you get these other maps. Um, this is a normal map, which the normal map will give you like an illusion of uh, like bump to the surface, like lighting will hit the surface and kind of give you the illusion that this detail, these details are on the model. And then roughness, which gives you like the shininess variation, how light will reflect off of the surface. So. Um, we haven't got into that yet, so don't worry about this. All we need is just color for now, and then we'll get into the more advanced stuff later. Um, so you can check those out. If you do end up using that, please don't just drop an image on there. At least bring the image in some editor and kind of make it your own thing. 
So blend images together, paint on top of it, whatever you need to do to make it your own thing is all I ask. Um, otherwise you can grab those free images and kind of make what you need to make. So here's, I also have this other example. Um, this is like a, an ink and marker texture that I drew on paper for a previous project I was working on and then scanned it in. And then you can see, you can also use this in the same way. So these are two completely different styles. Um, just to show you that you don't have to do like this kind of like photorealistic style. You can paint it too, if you want, like kind of a hand painterly look, um, either way, two different styles. Um, and I'm making the texture first. So, um, I sort of had it in my head, like a well start out making a well and a well, uh, is a pretty standard thing that game artists make early in their 3d modeling journey. So I thought it would be um, a good example there. And I know that I'm going to need wood. I'm going to need brick. So that's kind of where I started. Um, so anyway, I'm just going to go ahead and close those and show you how to start with the texture first. So thinking of a well in mind, um, start with the cylinder. I'm going to do 24 because it's a little bigger, make it look a little more, yeah, bring it up and put this on one. So there's this shape and I'm going to, um, go ahead and auto smooth it. I'm going to take off the top. Um, here we go. So when I do this, I will make, I will kind of get a shape and then I, um, make the texture first. So remember two, one model UV map texture second, and then the second object make the texture first and model the object to the texture. Right. Um, so I'm gonna make a new material and call this well material. I'm not going to model the whole well. I'm just going to kind of get you started. Um, and you don't have to make a well either. You can make whatever you want. Um, but something in sort of the same level of simplicity. Image texture open. So let me grab my well. Uh, I'm going to do the realistic one first. Um, I think it's brick wood. So there we go. It's mapped sort of not, not really. So I can go to UV editing and I'm just going to kind of UV edit as I go. Um, so I'm going to grab the sides, which is here. And I can, if you select here, I can choose the brick wood. And so I can put that texture on the background. Um, I'm actually going to move this out of the way and I'm going to move this down so that it rests on the bottom and then move this line, move this row of vertices. Why is it? Oh, okay. Sorry. I'm stupid. I was in the wrong UV mode. Um, so get rid of you vertex mode. Okay. Here we go. All right, here we go. Okay. I move that up to the edge here so you can see kind of what you got, which is stretched. Now here's the cool thing. Um, when I made this texture, I made it in a way so that this texture repeats. Um, so in Photoshop, you can use something called offset and you can offset it and then kind of blend the middle together. So this texture will actually repeat. So right now it kind of looks stretched because it's sort of like this shape is fitting into a square. Um, but I can actually, and this is something you do a lot with like environmental or architectural pieces. I can grab these and I can scale on the X and you can see it will go outside of the square. But since this pattern repeats, you don't have any like harsh seams. So I could do two, which will double it. And that looks better. looks more in line with what I'm doing. And if I were to sort of turn off, you can't really see where that you can kind of see a little bit there. Um, yeah, you can kind of see a seam right there, but that's okay. I can always fix that. Um, but otherwise it looks generally pretty good. The inside as well. Um, and then here's a little trick, um, to do like the top. So if you wanted to have like a top rim and then extrude it down, here's a trick for that. So if you were to just select this, and kind of oh, hang on and do something like that. Ugh, well, I have it snapping. Okay, so what was I doing? S and you pull it in and then you extrude it down and you get this kind of stretched because it's like stretching it. Um, so that can be sort of annoying. So what I would recommend instead 
is you could um, uh, let's see, let's see if I can do it this way. So I will make a, a cut about where that brick is. Um, if I want the height to stay the same height, you can select it and then you can sort of, well, I don't want to scale. Let's do it this way. Let's grab, let's go to, um, x-ray here and let's grab these and let's, uh, move these up. So it's the same height. So I could put that edge on the same height as I wanted to before. Um, I mean, you can eyeball it if you want to. Or you could type in like an exact number if you want it to land right on that corner. Um, or you could turn on snapping and do increment snap. And it should snap. Maybe. Hold on. Undo. E, kind of. Well, okay, let's just eyeball it. I don't feel I'm kind of wasting time. But yeah, you could get it to snap. Um, but I'm just going to eyeball it. So I want it to be this height. And then I make a cut, move it up. So now I have the cuts right on that brick line. And then I can grab this top edge and then I can scale the top edge in however thick I want that to be. And then I can scale it. Um, this is where we're going to turn snap back on. So go to vertex and then I'm going to move this down and snap it to this vertice. So now I have that nice, have that nice top edge there. That's like in line with the bricks and it sort of maintains the UV map. So if I extrude it, it'll stretch. But if I do it this way, it maintains the UV map. Um, and then from here you can extrude it down. Uh, there are some other things you can do to maintain the UV map and you know, whatever, but sometimes at this point, I just kind of want to be done with it. Um, so I am just going to extrude the rest down. To the bottom like that so i'm pretending this is a well that like you know usually for wells you really can't see the bottom but it's probably fine and then select the inside like there um okay hold on i messed up a little bit look at that so let's move it down so let's do on the z and keep it like that so it's even oh wait a second oh geez okay extrude Z snap. There we go. Okay. So this is the way I want it. So I'm going to select the inside and then I'm going to, um, I think I probably need a seam. I don't think it's going to let me let's just grab a seam there. So let's do mark seam. And then unwrap it. And then I'm just going to have to flip it, rotate 90 and kind of move it in place. Did I do it upside down? Yeah, I did. Okay. That's okay. 180 and kind of move it in place. Um, so you can be exact with this too. If you want to, you can turn on, um, snap and you can snap it but i don't sometimes i just eyeball it really so it doesn't have to be exact if you kind of get it generally it's probably pretty good and then this was scaled on the x um, by two and then now you get the inside and outside that matches pretty good got a nice little shadow there and yeah so and then from here too, if you wanted to like, you know, add a little bit of, so let's do like a, adding just a couple of loops in here. Cause usually if you have a well that looks kind of old like this, they're going to be a little, so you could kind of like slide i'm going to actually use the tool here let's go to layout mode so i'm not doing uv stuff x-ray so you can actually use this move tool here and just kind of like you 
move shift stuff a little bit so it looks a little unstable. Maybe scale a little bit. Maybe rotate down, tilt it down, just add a little bit of chaos to it so it looks doesn't look like a hundred percent like perfect, right? Especially if it's old like this. And then if you're doing little tweaks like that, I recommend doing that after it's UV mapped. So if you try to UV map it when it has these little kind of imperfections, it's gonna make the UV mapping process harder. Um, so UV map it when it's perfect and then go back and kind of ding it up a little bit. So there's that. Now, if I wanted to do like the wood pieces, I'll show you sort of an easy way to do that. Um, so I'm just gonna go to a, add a plane and I'm just gonna kind of move it out to the side and I'm gonna put the weld material on it. So if you have a material already in Blender, you can reuse it. So I'm gonna click plus and I'm going to add a uh, weld material. So the weld material is now on this guy. And um, I'm just gonna go to two edge mode and I'm just gonna put a couple of cuts in here. Uh, I'm gonna turn off snapping, sorry, snap off. So I need to eyeball this and I'm gonna put it right where the wood is. And then three, and then uh, actually since it's just one cut, I can just delete this. So now I have this like wood piece and then I can also put another, um, let's see, control R, I can put another cut right here. Grab that, tap Y, Y will separate it. And then now I have two wood pieces and um, you can grab the wood pieces and you can extrude them up a tiny bit to give them thickness. So now they have texture on the top and bottom. And then all they have left is like kind of these stretched sides. Um, those are really easy to fix, especially if they're thin, you're not gonna get too much. Um, so, oh geez, hang on a second. So this, I'm kind of, I have a mic, so I'm kind of far away from my keyboard, which makes me like miss miss uh short i keep missing shortcuts and hitting the wrong keys so there's like the edges there um i think this i think you need to add on to do this go to preferences i don't think it's magic uv um is it uv w oh i'm not sure um i've been I carry my add-ons over to versions, so I don't remember when I add them, but if you tap U and UVW, you can do box and that'll just, and then do size one. That kind of just gives you some texture for the sides. Um, obviously it put them, it put them in the brick section, but you can just move them up to the wood section, right? So now they have the wood on the sides. You don't have that add-on you can always grab the ones from this side um go to uv editing look at it see how i have it snapped if i'm looking at it straight on um then you can do u and then project from view and that gives you a nice straight projection of it and you can just scale it up a little bit and put it in the wood and that also works just to get the stretched texture on the sides. So now you have these two wood boards uh, that you can use and you can put them across the top um, to start building, you know, you can grab this one. Ooh, that's just the face, grab the whole chunk. Uh, like rotate it. Um, let's see, R90, there we go. So vertical. And you can use these to start building like your little roof structure and moving them around and duplicating them and things like that. Um, so, so yeah, there you go. Um, if I were to, and this works for any style, right? So if I were to go to well and go here and change it to my stylized ink, 
you can see it kind of works the same, right? Except I think it's not quite the same size. So you might have to go into UV editing and uh, switch this to ink. And you might have to kind of like, uh, maybe grab these, put these in here. You know what I mean, right? Just kind of, cause they're not exactly the same size, but, um, so like those could be sort of mapped on different areas and it works the same way. So, um, so there you go. That hopefully that helps you be mapping in two different ways. Um, and just to review the assignment is to model one object, UV map it, texture it in that order. A second object, make the texture first and then apply the texture to the model as you go. Um, hopefully this is helpful and I'll see you soon.